Hi everyone, Joey Coos from Paint with Coos, right here at Raise Your Mind Art Studio. And um, today I'm going to do another little kind of basic um, painting. Maybe, you know, something that um, doesn't have a whole lot of different elements. We're going to focus on just a couple techniques and we're going to work on just those so we can improve one technique at a time instead of, you know, sometimes I got a little frustrated trying to cram in five, six, seven different techniques that I wasn't comfortable with all in the same painting. It became a little overwhelming. So I'm going to like, let's simplify it a little bit, make a beautiful little picture and let's have something to be really proud of and something to build on. But I wanted to start off and I just have a very small, 11 by 14 canvas. You ever have a canvas that sounds like this? Very, very loose. So loose, it, it it's, it's, it's almost difficult to paint on. And if I press on it, the indentation stays there. Very, very loose canvas. Spray bottle, plain old water. On the back side, not the front, on the back side, Spray it, get it wet. The cotton's gonna absorb the water. It won't go through because of the gesso. So we don't really have to worry about that. If you're worried about that at all, you can just let it sit until it's nice and dry. It'll stay super tight. Let's give this two minutes. I'll be right back. Well, it's been about 30 seconds. Tight as a drum, you can hear that nice sound. Maybe I'll incorporate this into my drum kit. Anyway, a little water on the back, tightens it right up, makes it a pleasure to paint on. And you know, if you're worried about the water, I've never really had a problem, but you could let it sit for five, 10 minutes, let it all dry up. It won't loosen back up, it'll stay tight for you. All right, good luck. Well, let's get this painting started. All right, welcome back. Our canvas is all prepped with a little bit of um, liquid white, a nice even coat. And uh, I've got my palette ready with a very limited uh, color selection here today. I've got cadmium yellow, alizarin crimson, Prussian blue, and I have phalo green, which is a color that I found I didn't don't use all that often and a little bit of titanium white. So very limited colors. I'm gonna make a very beautiful painting today. I'm gonna to start touching my brush into a little bit of this cadmium yellow, and I'm gonna mix it with the phalo green. And I'd like to try, I'm gonna, it's gonna be a bit of a, I don't know, usually you say you don't want green in your sky, but today I'm just gonna go right about halfway I'm going to start laying some of this color in. And from that, I'm just going to wipe it a little bit and I'm going to go a little bit more straight green, just a little bit more green. And I don't want it to be very dark. I'm just using a little bit of paint, not a lot. Just a little bit of paint. I'm gonna bring it down into what was a little bit more yellow. And today, 11 by 14 canvas, I'm just gonna use the smaller one inch brush. It's as big as I'm gonna get. I did use a two inch brush to put the liquid white on, but um, that's about all I'm gonna use that for today. But right there, I think that's a really pretty color. It's, you know, it's a little bit different for a sky, but you know what? Sometimes just a beautiful background color, something a little bit different, really catches your eye. So that's all I wanna do today. I'm just gonna try and blend this in a little bit, make it, kind of uniform. There. 
I think that's a pretty color. Very good. And that's probably going to be just about it for the one inch brush. I'm going to grab a filbert brush and a lot of this painting is going to be done with a filbert. So today I'd like to work on a cloud and to do that I'm going to make kind of a gray tone uh, for the cloud. I'm going to start with a touch of Prussian blue. Not a lot of paint. I'm not bringing a whole bunch. Just I'm just getting a little bit on my bristles. Then I'm going to go right into alizarin crimson. That's going to make a nice purple color. To that I'm going to add just a little touch of yellow. Just a little touch. That should make it gray. A little like a grayish purple color. I'll add a little white just so I can see what I've got. There. I don't want real dark clouds. I just want a little hint of something. I think that's a really pretty color. It's like a kind of a slate bluish gray. I think it's going to look pretty with this. So with the filbert, we're just going to do basically kind of circles, circles, just like this in, right in, right in with these three fingers, circles, very small. And I'm going to start small in the background, just some circles. I'm going to go up a little down. Down. I'm going to travel up to the outside here. Just some circles. And I'm going to let it fade away down here. And it's going to be a little small here. It gets a little bit bigger toward the outside. And I'm going to go right off the canvas so it doesn't look like our clouds are just in this little frame. And well, you know what? Let's start over here small, kind of come up a little bit, all right, no symmetry, you don't want one, two, three, you know, looks like the humps of a camel, just very loose, nothing, you know, this is, this is not too technical, you can just come up here and scrub around with this brush and it, it's going to look really pretty. I am going to go back to that one inch brush. It still has a little bit of the green on it, but that's okay. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to do circles, same motion, three fingers, circles, circles, tiny little circles, tiny little circles, as Bob used to say. And you know what, on these, I'm not worried about the tops that much. These are not very distinct clouds. These are just, you know, little free floaters in the sky, just kind of hanging around, having a good time very faint very blurred not too distinct there and i think that's all we really need in the sky today i think that's going to be really pretty you can blend it out even more if you like if it's too much too drastic blend it even more just some hints of some passing clouds now i'm going to stay with the same filbert brush and i'm going to add just a tiny bit of the phthalo green color to my cloud mixture and some white and I'm just gonna make a kind of like a, a little lavender color I don't want it too bright but I don't want it really dark either I'm gonna make a mountain but this is gonna be a very background mountain it's gonna be very distant all right and I'm using kind of a small brush and I'm not using a knife all right but I'm also not doing this okay I'm not doing that that shape but the outside edge is bumpy outside edge is bumpy look at my hand shake my hand shaking and in here I'm just gonna make some shapes it's just scratch nothing nothing too technical just scratching around little kind of a nervous little shake in my hand and we'll blend this out miss the bottom and I think it's gonna look really pretty I'm gonna take the same one inch brush same thing down into the right down to the left on the left hand side I'm even, 
I have such little paint on here, I'm even able to go over the outside edge. What does that do for me? That makes this little mountain structure look very distant. It looks faded away, faded into the background. And once, once you have it you know, a little bit smoothed out, if you wanted, you could put a few more little distinct markings in it. I wouldn't do too much because it is very, very far away. I wouldn't do too much, but we can, you know, you can still get a tiny little something, some interest for you to look at, but it's nothing, nothing crazy, nothing, nothing too drastic. I'm just shaking my hand around, making like some darker shadows over here, some shadows over here. Same thing. And I'm still going to go back and blend that. There's not a lot of paint. And I think it really helps to settle that. That mountain is going to wind up looking, you know, way back 10 miles away from us at least. Over here, we can just make sure it fades on the outside. Nice mist at the bottom. It's blending in with the liquid white and the green. I think that's going to look really, really pretty. So two brushes so far, one inch filbert. I'm going to switch to a fan brush. And I, you know, I, I really kind of want the same colors, but I'm going to make them a little darker. So a little more Prussian blue, more alizarin crimson, and a little more blue. Just want to make it kind of blue, bluish purple, more on the blue side. I'm going to add a little tiny bit of the cad yellow and a little tiny bit, just to keep it the same, of the phthalo green. And a tiny bit of white. I don't want this very, very light, but I don't want it real dark either. I'm gonna make some distant trees. So here's one of Bob's famous techniques about making some distant trees with just the downward strokes, which goes down, 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 down. Now, it's just not hitting and letting go. He slides a little. Slow motion, slides, slides, slides. Okay, let's see what this is gonna look like. It's a little on the blue side, but I think it's gonna be fine because it is in the distance. I think it'll look kind of pretty. Let's see what we have here. We're gonna imagine now what I like to try and imagine when I'm putting in a tree line is that the hill that the trees grow on is not just a straight line. Okay, so you're going to have some highs and lows and some hills. So with this kind of a line, a wavy line, it gives my eye the, the intention that, okay, my trees will be a little higher here. They'll drop down here, up and down. So that it just doesn't look like one straight line of trees. So here we go, far distance. Number three, this is the small Bob Ross band brush. And I'm gonna follow that line, but I'm still, I'm still going to change the height of the trees. I'm not gonna make them all the same height. I want some that stand up a little bit more than the others. And I'm just going to follow that line. I'm going to reload the brush if I need to, or when I need to. And I'm just going to keep going down, sharpening the brush as it's necessary. And when I get down here, I'm going to want it to start fading away. And you can go back over it. It makes them nice, it makes them misty. And we're gonna do a little bit more of that with the one inch brush as well. But you could just keep going over it with the fan brush. It fills them in and it softens them at the same time. So I think that starts to look pretty. Now the same brush, same one inch brush, it has you know all the background colors in it. I'm gonna tap this. I'm gonna tap out the bottom of this. You do it sideways, 
horizontally, vertically, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter at this point. We just want to get this nice and misty. And these trees here, I'm going to really kind of mist out so it looks like these are going further back. All right, now I'm not touching the tops yet, only here. And then I stay at the bottom. Okay, once I get that, we can, we can just blend that out and very, very gently. Now don't go beyond the paint, just go where the paint is and lift straight up, straight up. And that again, that sets them in the distance. It blurs them. It brings up all these little tree tops, makes it look very, very pretty. Okay, there's one. Let's do another. That was a, that's great practice. These are excellent trees to make. Let's do another. Let's, um, we'll leave a little bit of mist in between. And now uh, we're gonna follow, we'll follow another line. You, you don't have to put this in. You can if you like. It is helpful sometimes if we can see that line. It gives our mind and our eye kind of something to follow so that again, we don't have, you know, just one straight line coming down into the painting. This way it kind of goes, follows the natural lay of the land. And this is kind of, I'm trying to get where this is looking like it's going down into a valley, maybe. We can make these a little bit taller. These a little bit shorter, a little taller. Looks like it's kind of going away from us. I think that's probably enough right there. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to mist out the bottom of this. And even those, I'm, going to, I'm even touching the tops over here make that look really really distant okay keep tapping on it I am not touching the tops of the trees here just the bottom I want to I really want to blend this color so that you really you can't really tell where the trees start they just kind of come up out of the mist once again there is just a little bit of paint there's not a whole lot so I'm going up just to the top of the tree I'm not going all the way just to the top of the tree straight up again it brings up all the little branches it helps to mist them and we're going to do it one more time what a terrific exercise now i want to do something a little bit different i'm going to go here and then i'm going to come here let's do this line and this line all right, get a little fancy. Straight down, straight down, dragging a little. Now it kind of looks like these are all coming from the same place now. A little more paint. And again, I'm going over it again so that they soften up and it adds, you know, so many trees you can't even distinguish where one starts and the other one stops. That's all. Just looking to, to kind of blend everything together. I'm going to, same, same one inch brush, I'm going to tap out the bottom rather vigorously. Don't be gentle. You don't have to be gentle with the canvas. It even makes a nice sound now that we tighten it up with the water, doesn't it? <laughs> you, can, you can entertain yourself, but we learn how to play the drums and paint at the same time. Oh, my drum teacher would be so proud. Okay, same thing, not a lot of paint, so I am going to just lift straight up. Look, look, it doesn't that just mystify him? Isn't that beautiful? It is so beautiful, so beautiful. 
I love I love the look of that. And you know, I, I I think this is just such a wonderful exercise. I want to do um, a little bit more. And I'm just going to make a funny little shape down here in the corner. They're a little bit bigger, but a funny little shape. Just goes up and down, up and down, up and down. Looks looks like a I don't know, maybe a, an EKG or something. <laughs> had a few of those all right so we're gonna tap this out make this misty pretty beautiful down here beautiful 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 straight up not a lot of paint look at how pretty that becomes yep this is a beautiful place so it looks like we're standing way up on top of a hill looking down into this valley boy 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 that is gorgeous but what an exercise. So um, I will, I would like to, I think I'm going to try and put a little something right here. In the opposite direction. Real close. Okay. One inch brush. Really, really tap out the bottom of that. I don't know if you can see, but because I'm using the same brush that I use for the sky, it's getting a little bit of a green hue to it, which I think is rather lovely, especially in this painting with the green sky. Which again, it's not, you don't normally see a green sky, but I just felt, I just felt very colorful today. So I thought we would maybe use a fun color. You could use any color you want. You could do this in blue, uh, whatever, whatever, whatever kind of mood you're in. Okay, so um, I'm, I've mixed up uh, a little bit uh, of a darker color. So this is a tree exercise. We're really working on uh, different ways of creating trees whether it be a distant tree or a a close-up tree we're just gonna i'm gonna go through a couple of those different exercises here we've had uh, the distant trees and some concepts you know about symmetry so for instance this line here with the with, with the the fog and then this line here had we just done fog 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 it would probably have looked funny it would have been like maybe three fingers sticking down out of the side so you know when when you see things like that and you're painting and you you know keep in mind like it, since we brought this one up here and then down it broke that repetitiveness up and uh, i think that's always important to 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 have um in your painting you know to not have the repetitiveness and you know as you start seeing it once then you start really noticing it and it's on your you know you your 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 mind's eyes automatically starts to see it once you you know once you recognize it and so it's pretty cool all right now we're gonna do some close-up evergreens gonna throw this stuff way in the background close-up evergreens I made the same the same mixture of my primary colors, Prussian blue, alizarin crimson. Probably if uh, if I had to give like a measurement, it'd be like two parts blue, three parts crimson, and then maybe half a part of uh, the cad yellow. And that just kind of grays down the color just a little bit. And you know what? If it gets a little bit of green, I'm okay with that too because. Hey, we're painting trees, right? We just want to know it's dark. It's in the foreground. It needs to be dark right up front. And that's going to that's going to make beautiful contrast. A, a part of painting is having a light light and a dark dark. And the closer those very lights and very darks are together, the more your eyes drawn to that. And I think the more attractive, the more entertaining it is. Um, you know, to have those big differences in values. Now, what you paint in between the very dark and the very light is also just as important, but 
for this for the sake of this video that's that's the key right there contrast is going to make a huge difference if i paint a dark tree over a dark background i don't it doesn't matter how good i paint that tree it, it just it's not going to be very attractive it's not going to stick out bob ross number three fan brush i love this brush it gives great detail if i could paint even giant trees with this one i would so um we're going to get a little crazy with these trees here. I'm going to come right up into the sky and I'm going to put in my indication of my tree trunks. Also, you know, what you don't want to do is, you know, I'll do it down here. You do, you know, okay, one tree, two tree, three tree, four tree, five trees. Right in a row, same space, about the same height going. That's, you know, that's something to, to be mindful of. So I want to make sure I'm going to put these in to know right off the bat, the space here is different than the space here. And then the space here is going to be even more different than those. So I'll bring this one down a little bit, maybe make it look like it's going downhill. And then I'm going to put another one, maybe... Oh, let's do it about right here on a little angle there. Okay. Now we have that. Let's go right over to the other side. I'm going to put a couple in right over here too. We don't want this side to get left out. Okay. We'll do one and we'll do, I don't know. How about we'll go really big on this one and we'll go right down the side. Okay. A lot of paint on the brush nice dark color okay it's not purple it's not blue it's not red because i added just that little touch of yellow it grays it down a little bit it takes it calms down the the vibrant colors and it makes in in my mind it makes a nice beautiful natural um, kind of a color so a lot of paint on the brush here's what we're doing i'm just touching right here just the very side of the brush all right let's see if i can show you i'm gonna make my tree trunk here just the very side at the top very side very side very side very side very side just the side of the brush one two three 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 side to side side to side and when i tap in the center I press harder and then as I get out to the edge I tap lighter tap hard light hard light hard light see harder in the middle harder in the middle lighter toward the outside of the branch but if I did the whole thing light it just looks like bare branches if you can see bare branches they, they need to get thicker and then thin toward the outside okay i hope that i hope you were able to see that i know from this angle you really can't see what the brush is doing but i wanted you to get the idea uh, i'm going to start on well it doesn't really matter how about this guy right here maybe the most one of the most important ones don't go too don't go too thick at the top. Otherwise, it's got to get really big at the bottom. See? Pressing hard in the center and less at the edge. Hard, less. And I can even I can even curve my arm as I'm going through this. You know, you see you see evergreen limbs and they sometimes they bend up reaching for the sky, for the sun. You could do that with your brush. I think it makes it makes it an interesting tree. All right, and I just, you know, once you get the hang of it, you're really just kind of tapping in the middle, and then bringing the bringing the branch out, tapping, tap. Look, it's just dark. Bring a branch out, tap. Bring a branch out. All right. I'm not going to go. This is going to just be pure dark anyway. But I just wanted to go through that to to go over the process very light just touching 
I push a lot of times when I start the tree, I push up into the paint. This way I can get very, very small branches at the top. A lot of paint here. And then this down here, I think Bob used to say you could paint this in with a shoe. It doesn't matter. Big roller. Just going to be a bunch of dark paint down there. I'm pushing up, pushing up into the paint. Get a lot of paint on that little edge right there. This way I only have to just touch and it makes some nice pretty little branches at the top. Same there. Just some pretty branches, very, very slim, very small at the top. So like I said, if you get you get too big right at the front, at the at the beginning, at the top of the tree, next thing you know, the bit the bottom's gotta be, you know, it's gonna look funny. So I always try to keep the tops as um, you know as slim as possible. Now let's do let's do another one. Just need to mix up just a little bit more paint. The blue, lizarin, a little bit of yellow. <clears throat> Excuse me. And start again right here. Very gentle, especially at the top. Tap 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 tap. Down to the left, down to the right. Press harder in the center, less on the outside. This is just going to be dark. All right, you know, so it doesn't make a lot of noise. <clears throat> And this, this is a perfect place to practice crunching the brush into the canvas. I'm really still, I'm still using just the corner, but I'm, I'm using this as an opportunity to get the feel of that brush on the canvas on an angle, but down, the handle is down pointing to the right at about 45 degrees. I took, I some, a lot of times I flip the brush over, get paint that's on the other side. This has a lot of nice texture right here. There's a lot of paint in here. All right. <clears throat> Let's go to the other side. A couple quick more trees. This has a bit of a green hue to it, and that's okay. I like to change the color too. It's always good. Little change. And push up into the paint. A lot of times, some of the most important parts are just the top half of the tree. Usually the bottom gets a little um, lost. <clears throat> Excuse me. Tap harder in the center, lighter to the outside. You know, I could probably just go down this tree and tap the whole center and then just bring out some branches. It's the same thing. And this way, the center of your tree is solid. And isn't that wonderful? The fuzziness of the background, it almost makes this look 3D because this is so crisp and sharp. I just love that effect. I love it. Sometimes I gotta, I'm going to be really honest. So I'm going to give away my secrets. But, you know, I think about it like I have any secrets. <laughs> you know, this painting has been going on for probably millions of years and there is I am certain nothing unique you know to to anyone that hasn't probably been done before in some form or fashion but I, I full disclosure I have I have um, planned and prepared entire paintings around this entire concept about how you know 
a very, very low, far off blurry distance with real, real sharp contrast in the front. I just think it is so beautiful. Now this tree is going to get a little bit bigger because it's way up going off the page, off of the canvas. But this number three fan brush is so fantastic for doing this. It's just wonderful. going to crunch this brush this is going to be really dark down here so it's not going to not going to matter too too much very very dark Look how pretty it looks with the dark corners you know what i think we need i think we need maybe one more i'm going to do one more right here Mix up just a tiny bit more paint. And make this sharp. And push up, push up the corner into the paint. And see, I rest my pinky sometimes. Just so that I can have better control of those branches. There we are. I think it needed that for sure. They're very pretty. Now there's some blank spots here. I'm not going to get fancy with, uh, you know, putting brown and highlight tree trunks in, but I want to make sure that it's solid. So, you know, it's not like there's a space and you don't see anything. So I'm going to use the same brush, same brush. I'm just going to go into the cad yellow right from here. So with all that color, Look at that beautiful, beautiful green. Now I don't want to have, I mean, I'm going to pet a little titanium white. I don't, you know, I'm not looking for bright yellow, you know, bright sunlight. This is, I want this to be very dark in the front, but I do, we're going to put on some highlights because, you know, that's a great practice, number one. And I think it's going to look really nice to have some different shades. So I, I didn't even wipe the brush out. I just went right into the yellow. It makes a beautiful, beautiful green color. So I'm going to start with probably, I don't know, let's start here. I'm right-handed. It's natural for me to put highlights on the right side, but, um, you know, it doesn't really, you could do whatever you, whatever you like. These aren't really like sunny highlights anyway. This is just, in my opinion, the way I view this, just seeing some different values in the tree, some lighter green, some darker green, because, you know, unless unless it's completely silhouetted against like a bright sun, you're going to see, you know, you, you would maybe see it as just a dark shape against, you know, against a bright sun being silhouetted. But in this case where the light, you know, may be coming from everywhere, maybe this is in shadow, but you'll definitely see some, some different tones, some different colors, different shapes. It's, it's something interesting rather than just a dark shape, which again, it makes beautiful contrast, but I just think it adds a little something to have some interest in it. Now I'm just tapping the same way same corner of the brush, but I'm just staying a little harder there, but I'm just staying kind of on top of the branches, just on top of the branches, not really mashing. In this one, I'm not really pressing too hard, you know, in the center. I'm keeping all of my, all of my brush strokes, every time I touch it is just very gently. Okay, nothing, nothing's, nothing strong, no forcefulness. Down, maybe in the darker, darker area down here, I can touch it a little harder. But up here, just gentle, tap, 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 tap. 
go kind of in a Z pattern. Tap, 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 tap. And using the corners. But don't cover all up, up all the dark, because the dark is what really makes this painting. That's in my opinion anyway. This little highlight here is just a practice, a practice on doing it. And this is a safe area to do it. This isn't, you know, this is just, it's just kind of dark. This isn't really bringing out a real vibrant, bright, bright green that's going to light up your entire, you know, be the focal point. This is a great way to practice these highlights. Okay, so these highlights, they're, they're not prominent. They're not right out in front of you, but they just add so much character to these trees. And it's, it's what a wonderful practice this has been. Um, putting on some beautiful highlights here. Now, again, I mentioned the v different values and what you have between the dark and the light is also very important. So if you have just light, you have just dark, and you have one tone in between, it looks pretty. Uh, and that's the, the best start to have a dark, a mid-tone, and a light. Now, if you can, if you can squeeze in three mid-tones and a light, that's where you really start to progress. Rather than just having, you know, dark bush with a light highlight, you have a dark bush with, you know, three mid-tones and then a bright highlight and, and your, your painting, it takes off to like a whole nother level. So what I guess what I'm getting at is, so we've, we've put in some mid-tones here. Could you come back with even a little bit of a brighter green here and there? and make a couple of these branches really stand out. Yeah, you can. And it really looks fantastic. It really does. Now all of a sudden you've got these beautiful, beautiful three dimensional pine trees, evergreens way up here on the top of this mountain. And you know, I, I swear I can smell the pine trees right now. I really do. This is a beautiful, beautiful little place. I hope that you've enjoyed painting this today. I hope you give it a shot. I hope you found this informational and enjoyable. I have to tell you, um, it's such an honor to have spent a little bit of time with you today. I've really enjoyed myself. So until the next time, I really truly hope you enjoyed. I wanna thank you for watching. Have a good day. Mm -hmm.